Then you just have to give it any. Do that right there. He was gored at some point and it didn't damage the outside skin, but what it did was it tore the muscle that protects his intestines and his organs. And once that damage happened, an intestine popped out and that's what's going on. Oh, dude, it's torn. Here's the bottom of the top. Today, we're gonna rescue that guy. Snickers. Grab a Snickers. Quit being cranky. Here. Yeah, how about that? What do you think he is? Anybody know what's wrong with this picture? Look at that right there. Today, we're gonna rescue that guy. Look at that. <laughs> that I, uh, the working when we got oh, yeah. Jeff. Did you see it? Said he did. Yeah. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Customers Bison. Got an adventure for you today. Something I've never been a part of, I've never seen before. There's a bison back here out hanging out with these cattle. It should be a show, needless to say, but I'm gonna rescue a bison today. And I'm going to, I am, I'm not. Doc over here is going to dart this bison. We're gonna sedate him. That's the safest way to do it because he's a little too big to round up and he can't rope these animals. I'm gonna sedate him, load him in the trailer. You're good. All right, so it's been what four minutes, <clears throat> four or five minutes, Larry. Yep. Didn't take him long. Doc put a heck of a shot on him. He's actually laying down, which is awesome. Shot him on his his left hip. It took about four or five minutes, and he started getting wobbly. And now he's uh, he's laid down a couple times. So we're gonna give him plenty of time to get fully sedated, where he'll pass out. And he's got an abscess on his right side, kind of coming off of his bottom ribs. We're gonna. Vaccinating, we're gonna go ahead and worm him just like we normally do our bison since he's sedated. Don't have to run him to a squeeze chute. Doc's gonna check out the abscess on him as well. So, in the meantime, 
Brooks and I are hanging out here with the cattle. You got a buddy. We're about 10 minutes in now. Let me see that. What are you saying? Cap is checking him out. Wondering what is going on. So what we did was we pulled up here from a distance and let uh, Doc get a good look at him, kind of guess his weight. According to his weight is how much anesthesia, how much drug, whatever that anesthesia is, that drug is called. Um, he determines how much to put in the actual dart because you can over drug these animals. You can almost kill them if you put too many drugs in them. But... From you. No. But he's not that like No, he's not. Can still pick somebody like Yes. And give him another little light dosage. All right, so I got the truck and a trailer, and uh, we've got a tractor with a pallet ready. Doc had to put an extra dart in him, just a little bit more drug because he wasn't quite going down. We're gonna load him up on the pallet using a tractor. Doc thought he was about 300 pounds, and so that's what he gauges his weight with his dosage. Gonna get him loaded up, and Doc's gonna look at the abscess, and we're gonna go ahead and get his vaccinations. Keep you posted. Stay tuned. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't want it. This ain't Disneyland here. Yeah. He said it's a hernia. Is it? Yeah, he got gored probably. And... Tore that belly wall. And... So that's intestine. It's an intestine? Yeah. yeah. Go in there, show it all back in. Zip up that wall. too big. It'd be hard to get it to hold. Poor fella. Eating. Mm -hmm. Eating. 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 Yep, you can feel them straight around. So you can't go to poking on that thing. Huh? So you can't poke uh, that thing. <laughs> Yeah, you probably know more. Well, I don't know about that. We're just gonna kind of pick up and flip him over on there. Okay, well, shit. What'd you estimate him weighing? Oh, he's heavier than He's probably gonna be around closer to five. Is it a male? Yep. Their horns, you can tell. Buffalo bleed here.
Close him up, or do you, or segregate him, or just leave him the whole drug? Okay. He's gonna leave me the drug to wake him up later. What are you gonna but name him? Crowded boy. He's, that's a Kriner? that's an Edzard. Let that one y'all figure it Dean out. Dean or Kriner? Mm. Not Dean. Buffalo. Yeah. Kriner or Dean? That was a lot smoother than I thought. Yeah, you're way too too worried. <laughs> hey, hey, you need to come come to a working and you'll understand. Just call it Larry. You, when, you, when you do the working wanna, deal, I we'll cut that Larry. Larry love come to love watch because you'll be like, oh, okay, I see where you're coming from now. <laughs> no. Laying on the ground. I'll take another nap. I'll take another nap. I'll have a little relax here. Okay, so I just gave this, it's a bull and it's a yearling, and I just gave him his basically wake up dosage. Our doc came and he hit him with the dart to get him down. It took probably 15 or 20 minutes for him to get fully down. Doc had to make some runs and, and do work, so he left me the dosage to wake him up and I timed it about 45 or 50 minutes later. I just gave him his wake up dosage i'm not sure what drug it is um so i'm kind of giving him time to wake up and make sure he's sitting up like he is because over time these animals can basically food in their stomach they can regurgitate it and they can basically suffocate in their own back up their own vomit essentially so i want to make sure he's up he's kind of slowly waking up right now but may take him a little bit. He definitely knows I'm in here. Obviously, uh, I came in the side gate, gave him a vaccination, and uh, I was lucky to just get it in him then. So we're gonna give him time to wake up, but uh, we're gonna take this guy home. He's got a big lump. It's probably the size of a woman's basketball on the side of his stomach. It's actually not an abscess. I thought it was, but Doc said it's not an abscess. He was probably horned. He's probably gored at some point, and it damaged a muscle that wraps around or wraps around the stomach and so that's basically his intestines that have uh, popped out of there i guess it's his stomach i'm not really sure but some of his intestines have protruded out so there's nothing really we can do you could go in and do some surgery i'm sure it'd be really expensive we're going to take this guy home give him some feed and whatnot and probably put him with the rest of the yearlings we'll see how he does but doc said you know he'll be he'll be okay as far as he knows with that damaged muscle tissue on the inside not his skin but on the inside stomach area you know of his belly we'll keep an eye on him and uh, make sure he wakes up here we're gonna hang out today a little bit and uh, do some fishing and um, make it kind of a day event and catch up with some some good friends we haven't seen in a long time and got to spend time with so we're gonna do that today and uh, take this fella home so it actually wasn't that crazy of a roundup or that crazy of an event i was really kind of worried because these animals once that they get people around them and whatnot they their adrenaline goes and we didn't want that to happen with him but luckily we just got out there with those cattle he's just been hanging out here so let me kind of tell you the background on this guy a couple of months ago dean my dad's best friend 
what he did was is he he sent us a text message and showed us a picture of, a, of this bison that showed up at their property just random nobody knows how this bison got here but it just showed up here well after 30 days you have to call the sheriff basically sheriff comes out sees the animal well, after 30 days, if the animal's been on your property, you own the animal. And so that's what happened here. Another month passed by and he's like, hey, do you want this bison? And so I was like, yeah, let me see what I can do. So the first person I called was Doc Parsons. He said, yeah, we can dart him and then we can put him in the trailer. But Doc has to be here uh, legally as the vet to do that. So that's what we did. And we rescued a bison today. We're going to take him home to Cross Timbers Ranch. We got our yearling bull back. Actually what it is, I talked to Doc a little more. It's actually a hernia that's on his side. It's It's gotten bigger since I first saw the first images of him. But we let him out here with our yearlings. My three are out here and then I've got five from, from Peter Cole in Missouri. Smelling of him, they're rubbing him and trying to figure him out a little bit. <laughs> He's been hanging out with cattle and cattle don't seem to have that hierarchy system like bison do. So it'll be interesting to see kind of where he falls here, but we're just uh, glad to help Dean and uh, his brothers out on their property and their land. They quickly owned a bison and didn't even know how it got there or anything like that. But after 30 days, it was theirs. And he kept me in the loop and uh, asked me if I wanted it. And so I got Doc involved. Of course, about half of my videos, you always hear that name, Doc Parsons. And, uh, just again, lucky that Doc is so close. Thank you guys for watching today. Kind of a odd situation. Bison shows up at a uh, family friend's property. Been there a month. After, you, after that animal's been there for 30 days, technically it's yours. Nobody knows where it came from. It may have been from, some people use bison uh, to train cutting horses could have been i don't know but this bison randomly showed up there finally we were able to get doc scheduled so busy as he is get him out there and so we could get this bison away from the cattle and off their property and get him into our hands so we can take care of him he's out here chilling right now probably recovering from a long day and that anesthesia so um anyways we'll keep you guys updated on him and we'll keep an eye on his hernia and see how it goes doc says that they can keep living and be fine with the situation that he has so um hopefully he does we'll just we don't know what we'll do with this guy but we'll just keep you updated on him and um, hope you enjoyed the journey if you haven't subscribed to us guys follow us along at cross timbers bison just raising the american bison guys right here thank you <laughs>
okay, okay, okay. We'll do it, we'll do it. We'll move you. Put that tail down. As you can tell, see I struggled a little bit trying to pour it over the fence. Try not to get in the fence, but all right, we're gonna try this tub. I didn't have another heavy trough, um, one of those heavy duty ones because I'm feeding the calves out of it. We'll see how this tub works because there's the problem right there. We'll see if this guy will not flip it. If he does flip it, I guess the only, like here, I, I spilt that, it's, I don't know. If he does dump it, the minerals are in the ground, so we'll see what the uh, herd thinks about it. They're going to come check it out, and, whoo, she said, whoo, oh no, that's because of quapaws around. Sniffing out, mm, what is that? We'll see what they think. I did the tin fine with garlic, so... I don't know if you guys have ever met the characters or not. I just wanted to introduce you to the loudmouths, the ones who are always interrupting my vlogging, blogging, whatever you want to call it. These guys, especially this one right here, they're pretty feisty too. Uh, they'll uh, they'll get after you. So there you go. Don't have names for them, but these are the hooligans that are always interrupting me. Thank you for everything you guys do. All 
Uh, first one's going to put out for our bulls that I've got uh, pinned up. Because it is flat season, I'm going to go with the tin fine garlic. See how it goes. Because it is early in the year, I want to get a jump on it and see how the bison react to it. That's kind of the thing I want to try. Last year was a little late, so to put it out. But I'm going to put this one out for the bulls just because they're up here and uh, when it rains it gets really muddy in this area and whatnot they've got the free choice uh feed i think if there's any attraction of flies it's going to be more up here so i'm going to put this one out for now you can't smell it right now but that garlic is strong i mean this mineral looks so good i i want to lick it i want to taste of it but i'm not going to so um <laughs> but whoo that garlic that garlic sure smells good tempting for sure let's go put some bison 90 out for the calves i think they'll like it they've been they've since i put them out there they've eaten a bunch of it they seem to like it up grazers you guys look happy out there in that green grass Take a look. I think they're expecting feed, but they'll like this. Maybe not this minute. They'll get it figured out. The calves have got the bison 90 selenium minerals. The bulls have the garlic um, loose mineral. I put all loose mineral out today. We're gonna see how that goes. It's gonna be a good test run because it's early in the year, you get lots of moisture, the flies start coming out. So I really wanna see how the garlic responds to the bulls and to the big herd as well. Garlic is just an additive to the mineral. Definitely smell that stuff, but supposedly it's supposed to keep the flies away. So we'll see if that reduces the flies on the bison. Other than that, these are just minerals that if they're not getting from what mother nature provides then this is something that can help fill in those gaps for the bison the next thing i need to do is i need to do some soil samples out here and get it back to redmond and see uh kind of see where we're at and see what minerals that are lacking here on this specific property just things you got to do for the bison try to keep them as healthy as possible thank you guys for watching and i hope you've enjoyed uh, the, the latest couple of videos if you guys haven't you can check out our website at crosstimmersbison.com you can check us out on facebook check us out on instagram thank you guys for watching us see the baby
Oh my gosh. Hey Brooks. Well, hey there, Dunbar. Look, we got a new one right there. Oh my goodness. I knew it was coming. We're losing shoes and a beanie. This thing. Hey guys, Dusty Baker Cross Timbers Bison. This is Brooks Baker, baby girl. We are checking for babies because I knew we were super close on some more and we had one a couple days ago. Peaches has had her first calf ever. And then I come out here today and I knew there was one more. Either Bell Star or Quapaw was really close. And sure enough, Bell Star's got a baby right out here. I'm gonna let you guys take a look. So this is Peaches. She had hers. Oh, look at there. That's full protection mode right there. Wow. All right. Feisty mom, I like it. And there's a little calf. Don't know what it is. And then over in the distance, see, yesterday I came and checked them and we've had number two here. Peach's baby. And Bell Star didn't come up. Matter of fact, she's right out there by a bison waller. She wouldn't come up because we've been bringing them cubes. That's what Dunbar wants. It's an easy way to check on them and see how they're doing. Plus, we've been using it as a rotational uh, tool. Obviously, you've probably seen that video before. Looky there. Looky there. But Bell Star didn't come up. And guys, I, this is kind of crazy. Baby fever. But we've got another cow out here. And she's not coming up. And her head's down. Which means I don't think she's grazing. I think she's licking on... A newborn calf so this is tough because i don't like to get too close but i want to get close but i want to get out there and i want to see and just by the looks of it i think it's little quapaw heifer is who i think it is so we've got a new baby right here we've got peaches baby and something's going on out here and i just by the looks of it we may have another calf so we've got eleanor big Grand Champion Quapaw, oh crazy old Dakota, who's the one that's been sick. Quapaw, she's hadn't had her baby yet. She's getting close. We've got to go check this out, Brooks. Brooks, I think we showed up on a good day. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's give this guy a couple cubes so he'll leave us alone. This big old guy. Let's go. It's been raining here so much. Oh, looks like he got a cigar. I'm gonna give this guy some cubes real quick. Sorry, we're gonna have to throw him down on the ground for you so you can leave us alone. I don't have time to hand feed you. We got action, we got things happening. We got, we got some more red dogs on the ground. Huh? You guys don't think Brooks is afraid. Here. Give it to him. Give it to him. Oh, she just wants to pat him. Oh, he's gonna lick you. <laughs> Look at the baby. <laughs> Give him your cube. <laughs> Look at the baby. Oh, Dunbar. All right, buddy. We gotta go see what's going on out here. Okay. Let's open this gate. 
everything's a little bit tougher when you got a baby but oh, we always make sure she's safe because this big old goon not that he would try to hurt anyone it'd just be him getting out of the way him that's the only way okay we'll be back we got we got some stuff to do baby a heifer we did not expect to have a baby oh my gosh little heifer has had a baby this this is kind of crazy because doc preg checked her and i think he missed her i saw some signs the other day that i just paid attention to i saw some signs Oh, look at this guy, getting all wiry. Dude, you're getting, you're getting too close. Monkey there. Oh. I did not expect this, but I told my wife, I said, little heifer looks like she's pregnant. Hey, get out. Baby? Oh. You see that baby? Oh. Oh. Eleanor wants to know what's going on. Oh. Hey, you best back up. <coughs> Tell her. <coughs> so get back. Get back, Eleanor. Here. We're gonna move. Dude, you need to calm down. Ah. We're keeping our distance. Um, but it's kind of funny. All the babies are migrating together. She still has afterbirth coming out. So she just had the baby. See, this is, see, this is little heifer. And that is the one next to her is what we call grand champion quapaw heifer. I bought these two together in 2019 and they're buddies and they're, they've been hanging out together for since they've got here. So she's checking on her. And she'll, the one on the right will be pretty soon. Dumbar, he's gonna go check now. Perfect. 
perfect. That's what we want right there. What in the world are you doing? You're flopping around and we've got a brand new baby out here. What a surprise, what a surprise. This is, this is fun and exciting because we did not think that little oh. heifer was gonna oh. have a baby. What, okay. My wife is going to be pumped. I haven't called her or told her yet, but I've got some good shots of the baby. I've actually never seen one this close to being born. I've never been able to see one even licked off. So this is, uh, this is exciting. The first time for me to even see that afterbirth uh, because we just missed her having a baby. And um, it's funny, all the mamas are hanging out together over there of our two new babies. And this is our newest newest and then i know this is our funny looking cow that is dakota she also came with quapaw here they used to look a lot alike and then dakota the one that doesn't have any hair right now she's made a recovery from uh the disease anaplasmosis um from a horsefly bite and i've done a video on that a couple years ago maybe a year and a half ago she's healthy she doesn't look <laughs> she looks a little crazy she looks a little funny. It doesn't look like a bison. It looks more like a, more like a water buffalo. She used to look just like this um, at one time. She missed having a baby last year, but um, Doc says she's pregnant. So you guys remember me telling you about maybe having seven calves? Well, um, we may have eight now. If uh, Doc was correct on his preg checks, uh, which he just happens to miss. I mean, he's preg checked thousands of bison and I'm sure thousands of cattle, cows. So, um, you know, sometimes you just don't get it. But the other thing that may have been tricky for him, what are you doing? Is because this heifer, she's a little heifer. She's not that big compared to some of them. So uh, he, he may have just been hard for him to actually feel the calf. But guys, I'm glad you could be a part of this. A very exciting time. I promise I'll get closer and get some up close shots. Once the mamas settle down and the calves get used to their new surroundings, I'll be able to get closer to them, but I'm being respectful. This is close, plenty close enough to mama that just had a fresh red dog. So this makes four red dogs now on the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. And um, right there, number four, unexpected. But like I said, I saw the signs and I try to keep up so I know which ones are getting really close. I was right this time. So my wife is going to be pumped. So I'm excited. Who is that? Look at Eleanor. She's getting on her ATV. She said, where are the cubes? Where's the cubes? <laughs> what are you doing? Eleanor, you silly bison. All right, stay tuned. We're right in the middle of red dog season. I guess halfway there. So you guys keep watching and stay tuned. And I'll keep you updated on baby calves and uh, seeing all these red dogs out here. By the way, I've been getting questions. Why do they call them red dogs? Well, as you can tell, when these babies are born, they have this unique red color. I don't know what you call it, kind of a red orange, like a cinnamon almost, or the like a color of this Oklahoma red dirt. And uh, they look like a full-grown dog out here. Uh, when you look across that pasture and you see that unique red-orange color. So it's just something God did. It's just like baby deer born with spots. It's kind of sort of the same thing. Uh, but we're only dealing with the, the North America's largest mammal instead. So hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Thanks for tuning in with Cross Timbers Bison. Scratching. Tell her. Huh? <laughs>
<laughs> Tell Eleanor, hi. Huh? Give her a wave. There you go. Say hey, Eleanor. I'll take Brooks' chicken. So we're gonna move the, Kevin just moved him out of here. We're gonna move him to a lot that hadn't had animals on it and golly, uh, maybe a month and a half or two months. We've got the calves with us this time. So all the cabbies, we've got four. Yes, four calves. We had three in like two days apart. So that's awesome. So we're gonna move them. They should be easy. They'll just follow mama and uh, go on a greener pasture. So here we go. Here we go. Get out of the way. Grab a Snickers. Grab a Snickers. Quit being cranky. Here. Here. Yeah, how about that? I'm gonna go open this gate. Well, we've got one. Here come the rest. Sometimes you're just too close. You know what? Back up. Back up. gotta move up this guy jeez oh my gosh jumping in the air get out of the way do not hit the ATV hey
first time they've been in this pasture in forever. Dunbar's gonna lead the way first. If I don't beat him to it. One goes, they usually all go, but the mamas with the current calves, they've been hoarding up together, staying together as a pack. So it looks like they're gonna, it's gonna take them a second to figure it out. And they have to get over here and rattle the bucket some, but this paddock has got a lot of Bermuda. Like I said, this is, hadn't been touched in a while, but there they go. So might have to leave this gate open for a while, and let them all come in here. One head to turn, two heads. Not gonna happen. So I've got one more gate over here. They may come through, they're over here right now. Let's get the bucket. Let's see if they'll make a move over here. May or may not. moving the herd today the four mamas with currently four calves are all hanging out together i tried to rotate them so we've got a paddock right here paddock right here one of the previous videos you guys saw i was flying the drone this is this paddock probably the largest paddock and then, and then we kind of been rotating them back and forth but we've got this one where we've got big joe kind of separated so we try to go this way and back up got everybody without a calf up there but the four mamas stayed together and they're riding it out together so not gonna move them not gonna push them because it ain't worth it because their babies are days or like five days old is the most so i've got to leave them there leave them together and then we'll go from there just another day on cross timbers bison ranch just doing our thing trying to take care of the herd move them around with our rotational grazing. So thank you guys for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the video of seeing the bison bull being rescued. That was a fun event. I thought it was going to be more of a, uh, a Wild West show, but it wasn't, which is what Doc and I try to do whenever we come together. You try to keep those animals as calm as possible and keep them relaxed and just make things like they're normal. And so that's what we tried to do and it worked out great. And luckily that bison bull is pretty calm. He's been hanging out with those cattle and I bet he's happy to be hanging out with those cattle because there's no hierarchy system in that herd. They were, he was just hanging out, just another, just another guy. But um, here, uh, hanging out with those yearlings, he's, uh, he's moved down the, down the pole a lot. So he's, uh, he's at the bottom, but uh, that's okay. He's here. And he needs to be with bison and um, we're, we've got his vaccinations in him. It's warmer and he's getting some feed now and some hay and grass. So he should be good. Um, we'll hopefully see some improvements with him. As far as the hernia goes, I think that's there for good. That's not going to change. Um, hopefully it doesn't get any bigger, but we'll keep an eye on him. Thank you guys for watching us.
Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Checking on the babies today. This is Kit from the Big Joe Herd. This is her first baby, a heifer baby, which is exciting. This is what we want. They are coming in to get a little bite to eat. Oh, I'm gonna get away so she can be with mama. We are right in the middle, red dog season. And so I love coming out here and seeing if we've got a new baby or not. That's one thing that I always love about coming out here is you never know when you're gonna have another baby. You never know when you're gonna have another red dog. And I, I love coming out here and doing that because you can just go out there and if you watch one of my previous videos, you may be surprised on what you may find out here on the ranch. And so I'm gonna go out. We're gonna fly the drone actually this time and see how close we can get to the babies. We're gonna see if we have any more. We've got five right now number six should be coming here pretty soon get in there little guy if you guys are ready let's go out in the pasture and see if we got any more red dogs hey get off my boot so i'm just here hanging out with the herd i'm sitting actually on top of the atv like i said one of my favorite times of the year you come out here and you never know when you may see a red dog. Now Kevin's been helping me out when I'm not around or I haven't been out here. Kevin will let me know if he has seen some red dogs. He'll send me a text or a pic and say, got a new red dog. One day I came out here in one of our previous videos and there was like three. I had like two in one day and then one the night before. I mean, it was like boom, boom, boom. I had a bunch of babies together. Uh, and then that's so fun to come out here and see them. And it's really not hard to tell because the mama is always either separated or um, it, it's easy to even see their bodies because of that red color that sticks out. Oh, man, this thing is getting rough. Oh, speaking of that, I want to thank the sponsor today, Harry's. I need to get the razor out and clean this up. Oh, For me, it's about being professional. I got to keep this thing clean. Yes, I do have a beard and I don't need much of a razor, but I do have to trim this stuff up. I gotta make it look clean, especially for you guys being on the camera. So my favorite thing to do is be on this camera. Of course, I'd rather put this guy on there. Harry's is a personal care brand that delivers a close, comfortable shave at a fair price, as low as $2 per blade refill. Harry's support great causes as they give 1% of their global sales to nonprofit organizations that provide mental health care for those in need. Men, veterans and lgbtq plus use one of the least parts of, of shaving is how expensive the razors are one of the things that i love about harry's is the low price of two dollars a refill they have a hundred percent money back guarantee redeem your trial set for three dollars when you visit harrys.com backslash timbers in your trial set you'll get a five blade razor weighted handle a blade cover and their foaming shave gel it's an incredibly great deal, but act fast while supplies last. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna fly that drone. I wanna see how close I can get to the babies. I maybe actually can see what sex they are. See how many males and females that we have, just so I know. That'll be super fun to do and, and, and see what we got. I think we have at least one heifer out here. I haven't been very close to them because they're just very distant, especially with being so young. The older they get, the mom will get used to it and the babies will get more comfortable being around. Let's take a look at the drone.
that was pretty cool so we've got three females and three males total so we've got currently five babies here in our dunbar herd and then we've got kits from the big joe we still have got one more from Flo from the big joe herd to um, calf and then possibly i think doc says she's pregnant but dakota is our last one from the dunbar herd to have a calf we're even right now we would love to have heifers because of course you guys know if you don't know what my goal is my goal is to grow the herd that's basically my short-term thing right now as i want to grow the herd and marissa and i are on the side and it's taking a little bit of time and it does take time but we're trying to figure the meat side of things out for cross timbers bison a, a little bit different side of the business on this end besides that the quickest way to grow the herd is to keep your heifers and that's what we got right here we've got at least three heifers and that's super exciting so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed seeing the babies it's fun to do anything with these red dogs they're just they're a unique animal you know not only is it just babies out here they've got this cool red color about them which is why they're called the red dogs and we love red dog season thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed the videos growing the herd this is what it's all about right here those little red guys out there thank you guys for watching Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. One of our new popular guys back here. Lumpy, I guess, is, is basically what I've been calling him. I'm right over here hanging out with all the yearlings. As you can tell, he is doing fine. Lump is still there. It looks like it's uh, maybe gotten a little bit bigger. He's good. He's been hanging out. He's been eating. He's acclimating really well to his new environment with the yearlings. Um, I will say that he's down at the bottom of the pecking order uh, along with some of the other yearlings in here, some of the other young ones. But I, I knew that he was probably gonna be uh, at, at the bottom of the pecking order just because there are some couple of bit bigger yearlings in here. And with his issue, just wanna give you an update on him. Couple of things, I've, uh, lots of questions I've been getting on him. One is a name for him well you know i've got a couple of good ones some some advice from people I, I don't like to give them names unless i know for sure i'm gonna keep them for him i mean we could ernie with the hernia i don't know i thought that was a good one <laughs> i've heard uh you know i've called him lumpy since the beginning it's probably not the nicest name but it is what it is so a couple of questions one why didn't we quarantine him well one of the things why we didn't quarantine him is we felt like he was in a deep, his health was good. You know, I had Doc there and he's seen lots of bison. He didn't think it was a problem at all. And I get a lot of advice from him. He didn't seem like it was a problem. He could have had diseases, but just to be honest with you guys, it's rare for bison to have diseases here. And if they do in this part of the country, 
you're going to be able to tell um, by their body language and, and, and what their body is showing. They would look unhealthy. He obviously has the hernia. Um, that's, that's a whole different deal. Um, it would have been nice to quarantine him, but here's the problem with quarantining is you can't put bison by themselves, really, um, because the reason why is they will stress out and they will get sick, their immune system gets weak, and, and they, I mean, the worst of the worst is they can die. That's the worst part of it. But So that's why we don't separate the bison by themselves if you really want to quarantine them. So that's why we didn't really quarantine him. Just wanted him to come home, be around some bison, feel like he's safe and, and back with some of his his cousins and some of his friends. That's the reason why we didn't quarantine him. Some of you asked, could he have bred with some of the cows? No, because here's the reason. He's gotta be at least two years old and he's only a yearling. Bison, you gotta be two years old before you're able to start breeding. They're basically two and a half years old at that point. He still has a little ways to go before he's even able to do that. Uh, plus he's he's little, he's, he's not gonna be able to hardly get up there on some of those cows. Uh, and by the way, I don't encourage beefalo at all as part of the national bison association we make an honor to never encourage that to never do it to never breed bison to cattle and, and i could get into a whole bigger deal about that but you don't want to lose the genetics of these awesome animals and you can do that when you breed them with cattle to try to create that beef flow. we're not doing that here we will never do that and if anybody does that we highly discourage it so what was the deal with this hernia? How did he get this hernia? In case you didn't know, in case you didn't catch it in the video that I actually went and rescued him, the hernia doc said, so basically he was gored and there's no outside evidence of being gored other than the lump and where he's rubbing, it's rubbed the hair raw off of it just when he lays down. He was gored at some point and it didn't damage the outside skin, but what it did was it tore the muscle that protects his intestines and his organs and once that damage happened an intestine popped out and that's what's going on but when i asked doc about it he said that it was almost non-repairable it's very difficult for these surgeries because you've got to pull that muscle back together that holds those organs in those guts in you've got to pull it back together and tighten it up so that intestine will stand there. Well, the intestine has popped out and is enlarged so much, he could almost die from shoving it back in. And it's so big now, I'm not sure if Doc would be able to put that intestine back in to its normal spot and then sew the muscle around it together. I think it would be a very difficult surgery. And just by talking to him, uh, it's it's it would be very difficult. and not sure if he had survived that so because his hernia is so big now and it was already big when we got him so the next question is what are we going to do with old lumpy well we're going to just take care of him the best that we can and i know a lot of you want that surgery and i hope you understand a little bit more about about why it's almost impossible to do that surgery for him we're going to take good care of him here nothing's going to change he's able to graze he's able to be around his age of bison these yearlings that we have out here he's the same age as them so uh, we're going to keep feeding them and just giving the best health as as possible we'll see him again i'll keep you updated on uh, lumpy we'll keep an eye on that his condition but uh, it'll be nice to actually get him back up whenever we go to work them in the fall it'll be fun to try to get him in the squeeze chute and and look at that hernia again and have doc look at it and so then we'll be able to see it up close uh, once we work them later on this year so just want to give you an update on lumpy and let you know how he was doing hope you guys enjoyed the past videos uh, gonna keep you updated on the red dog season we're right here in the middle of it and we still got more babies to go we still, I think we have two more babies to go at this point. So we'll keep you updated. Thank you guys for watching.
Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Summers Bison. Welcome back to our channel, Raising the American Bison, the coolest animal in North America, the largest animal in North America. Today I'm gonna to do something that really benefited us last year, and it paid off this year. So today I'm going to put my big bulk feeder out to my Dunbar herd, my larger herd. So what we did was, is last year I put out a feeder right at the beginning of June, a bulk feeder. And, and what it is, it's our blend mix. It's called a DNH bull blend. It's a mixture of, of different feeds that we've always fed our bison. And it's just a blend of, of good grain. It's got soy, it's got corn in it, wheat mids. It's got a lot of stuff in it. We put it out last year at the beginning of June. And, and the reason I did this was I wanted to be able to, what I call push, my herd so i wanted to be able to push the females and, and when i say push what it means is when they when they eat uh that grain it gives them a little bit of boost it's not high energy corn is high energy but the whole thing's not a high energy food food source it's a basically a supplement feed uh, and we just like to keep our animals healthy you know we feed them during the winter for sure because there's not as much grass we also feed them hay but right now we still we're still in, in the spring stages, it's rained here so much and it hasn't got very warm. We haven't even got our summer grasses yet. So as you can see here, I put out a bale of hay just for these guys, just for the yearlings here, because we still haven't got our summer grasses yet because it hasn't heated up enough here. But just wait, it'll heat up, I promise. Here in Oklahoma, it'll get hot and then we'll be praying for that rain. But putting that feeder out helped us and what it did is it pushed those heifers that made them feel healthy and it kind of got them in their cycles a little bit earlier and the reason i want to do that is because i want the females my adult females the mamas the cows to have calves earlier in the season i don't want them to have babies in june and july my first two years we had babies in june and july and it gets really hot, like all the way to July 14th. And that's late. I, I don't want it to be them. So last year we put the feeder out uh, for about, I don't know, two months maybe. Now that we've had most of our babies, we still have two red dogs left. We can put it out for the big herd. And so that the big herd can get this, they can start eating. And what they do is those mamas will cycle. Yes, they cycle not long after they have a baby I mean, within a couple of months, those mamas are cycling and it's breeding season. And yes, they, they go through uh, the cycle stage when they're carrying a calf. That's just part of the bison world. And uh, most of the time, bison have their babies anywhere from April and May and, and can be in June. We want ours to have early so that we can avoid the heat. Um, and so far it's paid off because we've had almost, we've had six in May. And that's the first time that's happened. May 5th was the earliest. It's just like cattle. They're a little bit different. And if you got your bulls out there with your mama cows all the time, you, you may end up having calves in the winter. And then if you think about the winter we just had, the Arctic blast that we had here in the south, it did a lot of damage. It, it, and it hurt a lot of animals. And it killed a lot of calves. And when I'm saying calves, I'm talking cattle, bovines because of that extreme weather now i know it don't always get that cold think about having those calves in the winter and i know guys in the north have to deal with those conditions you don't have to worry about that with bison because bison are typically born in the spring so i'm going to hop in the tractor i'm going to lift this feeder up out of the bullpen and we're going to move it down with the big herd beast <laughs> no chats today all right we're way down there I don't even know what's coming the good stuff
you guys can't see them but they're way down there on the farthest point of the property laying out in the shade it's pretty they're chilling this is their uh chill time of the day kind of about that nine o'clock time it starts to warm up like it is but got this down here this sucker is heavy it is heavy all the weight is coming to the front end because i've opened the backs but now i'm going to open these up and because i've got a lot more animals down here i need it to be a little more accessible to all of them so i'm going to go ahead and open this up just a little bit so it can creep out and everybody's got room to grab some feed So I had the back end of this open for the situation that I had going on inside that pen where the bulls were. But now the front is very heavy. It's leaning a little bit forward and it's so heavy. It's weighted down my 2500 truck and I can't even get the hitch in. I don't have enough room. So we're going to have to let them eat it down and maybe get the tractor to lift the front of it up so we can actually move it. Um, or maybe not it may just hook up like that it'll get balanced out after a while after they come and eat on it but i think this has seen better days the pin drop pin yikes well i figured the herd would come up but they're uh they're not coming so let's go down and check them and make sure we don't have any more babies by the way a lot of you have been asking about some of my leather patch hats I ran out of stock a while back and um, I'm getting some new ones made. So here you go. Pretty soon I'll announce it and I'll let you know. I've got a lot of new hats coming in, some new styles. But this one specifically, leather patch hat um, with the gray look. It's one of my favorites. It'll be back in stock here pretty soon, guys. I'll keep you updated. Since I'm down here, got the feed bunk over here, kind of up on a hill where they won't make too much of a mess. But I just wanted to show you. Got our water system right here, it's doing great. Got a little bit of grass in it, but it is cold water. I love that. Well water from the Arbuckle Simpson Aquifer that we have here in this region. There's still a bunch of water here left in this old terrace from all the rain we've had. You can see the, the footprints and where the water is holding, but right here, this is doing good. No standing water right here. Got that one inch rock set, it's perfect water's doing good and what i like about that valve that job valve or joby valve i'm not sure how to say it but that's the brand of it what i like about it, it's yellow and you can see it like if i want to check it and make sure that the water's still up all i gotta do is look down in the pasture and if i see that bobbing up out of the water like a bobber then uh i know it's still there and if i don't see it we've got a problem Isn't that just a great sound? Nature out here, nobody around, just me and the herd. Well, they're not in the mood to have fun right now. I know you guys are like, come on, I wanna see the bison. Well, there they are. I'm seeing some red dogs, but I doubt I have any new ones. Um, I think she's got a little ways to go. Um, I'm not seeing many signs from her yet. From Dakota, she's the last one in the Dunbar herd to have a baby. They seem to be doing good. Not gonna bother them, they're hanging out in the shade. This is their nap time of the day. They'll graze early in the mornings and then they'll come up for a midday lunch snack, maybe get some water. They'll go back to resting and then they come out in the evening and graze again. So um, kind of like deer. But this is a product of putting this feed out for them, just some supplement feed. They're still gonna graze. I mean, look at all this grass. Those summer grasses, as it starts to heat up, will start coming through these guys will be on it. So they've got they've got the natural grass that is here and then they have some grain to try to push those females like I explained. And what will happen is we hope again next year at this time we have a bunch of babies in May. That's the earliest we've ever had babies and I think it's because of this right here because of that feed bunk that we're using. So, and I wouldn't be surprised if the calves actually eat some of that feed. And that's good to 
for them, it's fine. They're still nursing on mom, obviously, and we'll keep doing that for several months. But if they want to eat some feed, that's okay. Someday they'll have that feed. So it's a good way for them to get started and get some other food in their diet. Well, hopefully next year this pays off again. It's just nice that you've tried a new technique and it's actually worked and it's right here with those uh, five red dogs here and then kits up with the big Joe herd. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned with Cross Timbers Bison. You can go on to crosstimbersbison.com and I'll keep you updated on the hats. Got our shirts on there, Pioneer the Plains logo. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed seeing the red dogs out there. It's, it's always neat to see those cinnamon colored baby bison out there. It's just a fun time of the year. Okay, so today, doing some farm work today. I'm gonna do some spraying. So if you haven't, uh, you may can go back and watch one of my videos. Uh, there's an invasive plant and it's called we call it cockaburrs is what we call it and it's basically a a, a, a a little burr about this big they it's like a little piece of velcro it's basically where velcro came from the invention of it was from this plant it is a nasty plant it is a gnarly plant and it will get stuck to our bison in a heartbeat and then basically they'll spread it wherever they go and lay and their fur drops they'll seed right there so I don't want it to happen i've been fighting it for ever since we've been raising the bison. This was the first year they didn't have very many on them and Kevin and I have been slowly reducing that. And so it's that time of the year, they're already coming up with all this rain that we've had. We've had so much rain. You can see some of the mud existing here um, with the yearlings. What we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up a sprayer to my ATV. I borrowed a boom from my uncle Keith and I'm gonna hook it up to the back of the ATV and I've already got my 25 gallon sprayer here and I'm using 24D. Gonna use some 24D. I know you're like, don't use chemicals, don't use chemicals. If I don't use chemicals, these cockaburrs will be all over the bison and they are very hard to stop. We've reduced a bunch of them, but they're still coming around. The only other way I, I could get rid of them is go out there with a shovel. That's gonna take me a lot of time and a lot of effort. Not saying I don't want to put a bunch of effort out for these bison, but we can knock it out here by using 24D. And the good thing about 24D is it's broadleaf, so 24D will not kill all the grass. Plus, we're not going to have any animals on this certain paddock for a while. It's going to have recovery time, at least 14 days, and then we can let the bison out once this stuff starts to die and the chemicals are off of it. So I know some of you are anti-chemical. Well, every now and then, I'm part of a farm, we've got to use chemicals. I don't like to, but this is the best way that we can do it and the fastest way to get rid of it so it doesn't grow exponentially and cover our bison. Let's get it hooked up. Uh, we got our 2,4-D in here, getting the water put in. You guys take a look here. Remember, remember where this came from? Oh yeah, that's well water right there. Come from that well that trenched a bunch of line for our water systems. It's nice to be able to use that right now. Right there, some good old fashioned Arbuckle Simpson aquifer water is what that is. Got our water filled up. We're ready to rock. We're gonna cut through the pasture here where the yearlings are. We're gonna head out here to our top paddock. 
next to our silos. Oh, look who it is. Mr. Lumpy. You gotta say hi to Mr. Lumpy. It's still there. Can gain some weight, brother. So this is the plant we're after today. Right here, cockleburrs. Early stages, they usually will pop out those cockleburrs in late summer. Let me look at that one. That one's giant. That's uh, that's just uh, above my knee. But what's funny, I think is very interesting. And so there's the water system I established in the spring, right? So there's my old trench line right here. And that's where the cockleburrs are. And I, that's so strange because right there is where my other water system is. See, there's the big herd, Dunbar herd. And right through there, look at all the cockleburrs. So crazy. I don't know why, but that's where they all seem to form. This is our hay meta. I don't know how many acres it is. It kind of winds around the house there, but this is where we get a bunch of our hay. And man, it is almost chest high in some places on me, but it is, it is thick and ready to be cut. But like I said, we've had so much rain. This is gonna get cut here pretty soon. And it usually, we usually get about 15 bales off of these couple of acres at least in every cut and we get it cut twice a year so that's just hay right here for the bison but this is what i wanted to show you it was right here look at this these is what i'm this is what i'm talking about right here these are cockaburras see they haven't even dropped yet and uh, nothing's rubbed on them yet uh, we we drive our atv through here but this is basically what i'm talking about here i take these two off and I'll show you what I'm talking about and where Velcro was invented. And see, they already stuck together. We've got these little spikes on them everywhere and they stick together and they stick to everything. And that's basically what and that's basically what will stick to the bison. They'll carry it around with them. It actually gets stuck in their fur, it can get up in their skin. It's not good at all. You grab these too tight and they poke you, it, it's uh doesn't feel great. So yeah, this is what the end result is if you don't get on it, because this is what happens. And wherever this drop, it seeds. Well, I'm glad that's over with. It's not something I really love doing, but I really hate these plants. They just flat out suck, and they're wilting a little bit already because they've been sprayed on, so that's good. I hope them suckers are done with. But that's enough spraying today, and I hope that helps. It'll take them not too long. We finally got some sun. It's been sunny the past two days. It's beautiful, but it hasn't been. We've had so much rain. I, I mean, for about a half a month, it's rained almost every day. And um, it's crazy how much water we've had here. And it's just a muddy mess everywhere. So it's a good time to spray these while the sun is strong and get these suckers uh, disappeared, hopefully. Hey guys, well, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you've enjoyed a lot of my videos here lately. Just trying to bring everything I can to you and keep you updated on the red dogs and the herd. 
the two big herds. Keep you updated on the meat side of things. We're still working on that. Marissa and I are. It takes a lot of work. I know you guys didn't get to see a lot of the bison today, but they're doing good. Everybody's happy right now. Still got two more babies, Dakota and Kit. Dakota's with the Dunbar herd, and then Kit is with the Big Joe herd. Got those two left. I think Dakota's a late breed, so she'll, she, it's gonna take a while for hers to come, if she's pregnant, like Doc said. And then uh, Kit, I think uh, in the next week or so, we should have Kit, and that means we'll have seven babies, which is the most we've ever had at Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't, subscribe to us, follow us along, and click below and check out our merchandise at crosstimmersbison.com. Thank you guys. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Today, I am gonna do something that's needed to be done for a long time. Actually, right now I've got some rock coming. I've got a load of three inch rock that is gonna be used to fill in our corral. If you watch our spring vaccinations, when we brought the bison up, this is a main area where we like to bring them. We This is where we do a lot of sorting and we run them through our alley system and then they come through a squeeze chute and then they come back out here and that's where they exit and go to the certain pasture that they're supposed to go to. But this is super muddy. We've had so much rain here in the past couple of months. We had a very wet spring and now it's a hot summer that's been smacked with us. But if you can go back and watch that spring uh, video, I was trampling through this mud so much and, and it's hard to run through here, especially when you're working bison. You gotta be careful and you can't get stuck. And it was a mess, but I'm gonna get some three inch rock uh, brought in here, spread it out in here. And so now we have a good base. Uh, but I've got these bulls, they have access to come in here cause we've got water here so they can come in and out of this area. It's been trampled and stomped on so much. What are you doing big fella? That's good, Eric. That's good.
Well, that's all I'm gonna do today. Can't really get in there as much as I wanted to because it is still pretty soggy down here. And you can see these ruts, especially when that tractor gets uh, that rock in it, weighs it down pretty heavy. That three inch rock did a great job, but I was making ruts as I was driving in there and I don't wanna create even more damage to the corral and make deeper ruts. So I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and I still need to scrape it out and even it out some. The idea is to get water, kind of drains right here, want it to go out there. So we kind of build this up and it'll keep water out of the corral. Still gonna get some naturally, but I'm gonna try to get it to go out this way, out in that pasture and it can go down the hill. It's gonna pack down well, I think. Should do a good job for us. I'm gonna give it some time to dry up. I'm gonna come back and really spread it out even. Uh, these bulls are going to come in here because they have to come in and water and I feed them just like you saw. I feed them right here um, so they have access to this. Uh, they'll spread it out just by trampling in here and running in and out to get water and whatnot. So they'll kind of even it out some. But I'm going to go let the yearlings out for their pasture rotation. We're going to rotate them in a, another paddock. I call it my Bermuda paddock. It's uh got a lot of Bermuda grass in it which is not the bison's favorite but they'll eat it and if you leave them there long enough they will graze it and Bermuda does have a lot of protein in it and it makes really good hay so I'm gonna go let them in there here we go Oh, there he is right there. Mr. Lumpy himself. Hey, buddy. Water tank's doing great. Looking good. I'm gonna rotate him out here. thistles guys the gate is open hey gates open See who the first is going to be to see it. All it takes is one. Who is it going to be? It's right over there. Come on, guys. Thank you for that. Come on, pokies. They got it now. Come on, just uh, jinxed myself. Why is everybody pooping right now? How come when I come out in the pasture, everybody stops to poop and pee? Literally, all at once. I guess that's how you feel. Nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> I used to it. They don't see this big opening here.
No? Okay, you're gonna do it when I'm not here. Gotcha. Yearlings win today. Try to get it to move them, but they're just not used to uh, rotating over there to that paddock, I guess, because it's been a while. But um, I'll let them be. They probably want feed. That's probably what they want, but they're gonna go get grass because we got plenty of it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Just uh, as you can tell, catching up on a lot of farm work during this season. It's kind of quiet right now. We're just checking on babies, making sure that they're all good and uh, catching up all the, all the farm projects that I need to do. Spraying, taking care of the corral, getting it in good condition because we'll work our animals here in the fall and uh, we don't want to go through that muddy mess again and uh, just doing all kinds of projects and stuff getting stuff done on the farm but anyways thank you guys for watching still waiting on two more babies kit is very close i'm seeing some signs now from her she's part of the big joe herd uh we may have something in the next week maybe we'll see uh her her udder is not dropping a whole lot but their udders don't drop very much compared to cattle guys got some new stuff coming around for you stay tuned for some fourth of july gear maybe i may have my very first fourth of july t-shirt coming around the corner kind of two things one the fourth of july we're celebrating our independence day for america two the other thing is i'm approaching a hundred thousand subscribers and uh, i want to kind of celebrate for that thank you guys for watching Hey guys, Dusty Baker across the Summers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. I know this is a little bit different of a scene. No, I'm not hanging out in the pasture with my bison. Um, I'm actually just hanging out in the backyard. It's a beautiful evening. I wanna share something with you. Today, I went and visited a bison ranch. I got to do something that I hardly ever get to do and I really enjoy doing. Uh, but today, I went and visited a large privately owned bison ranch located in Oklahoma. Only located about an hour away from our ranch just had a unique connection to be able to go to this private ranch through my pawpaw coke which was set several years ago I was able to link up and, and made some phone calls and uh, because of that connection through my grandfather it led me to go into this ranch today it's called the Clearwater Ranch it's located in Blanchard Oklahoma just south of Oklahoma City area this ranch is privately owned it's a huge bison ranch over 12,000 acres it's a ranch that I've been following for a while ever since I got that connection I haven't been able to go visit this ranch but I did today follow me along So you you had had some from doctors past or yeah he's kind of got really hard. 
Oh, we did. Gary was able to show me around. They're busy cutting hay, so I didn't get to spend a lot of time on the ranch this morning, but he did take time out of his busy hay cutting season to show me around the ranch a little bit and show me his big herd. And when I say big herd, I'm talking 450 plus cow calf herd, big herd. One of the biggest herds I've actually been a part of. A lot of these feeders come attached with these sirens and a lot of just like cattle people turn on their sirens and that means it's feed time that means it's it's an important time <coughs> using that feeder and that truck it's a little bit safer than using an ATV like myself I know I need a farm truck I know I do <laughs> using that farm truck they get used to that and you can hear the sound in the video you can hear the that sound that you're hearing that sound is feed being dispensed out from the hopper in the back of the truck that's a safe way to feed the bison of course they come up you can see them running to the truck because they're excited because they know what they get that is actually a great way to move bison when you need to move them pastures and hopefully i can use that tool someday you see me out there with the atv shaking the bucket <laughs> I know, right? Now I can do that because I have a little small herd and I've spent a lot of time with them. Yeah. Hey, Dallas. beautiful animals they had a lot of really good looking animals I did learn today that a lot of the animals that this owner particularly started with was Doc Parson Doc helped this gentleman get started on his private ranch some of the animals out here on this property are actually from Canadian River Bison which is Doc Parson's bison herd Another great part of visiting this ranch is I was able to see their handling system. I was able to see their funnel system of how they actually catch that many animals. When you're dealing with 
hundreds of bison. It's a little bit challenging, I'm sure, but that's why you got that feed truck. So you can get them up there and you can funnel them down into smaller and smaller pens into your holding areas and actually your alley and into your tub and into your squeeze chutes. I don't have quite 400 bison, but I'm always trying to improve our equipment, improve our handling system to make it easier for our bison. They've got about, I think he said seven mature bulls out there, breeding bulls oh. with the herd. And if you think about it, you've got 450 cow calf animals out there. You've got seven bulls. You can do the math on how much ground that these bulls cover when it comes to breeding season. And if you've got big herds like that, you need that many bulls to make sure that all of your females are getting bred. Oh, uh, you use safe parking. hang out together quite a bit. <laughs> I've heard that a good healthy bull, depending on your grass and water and all those conditions, health conditions, one bison bull can breed up to 25 females. That's pretty good. Yeah. So you just get a bunch of tractors out here and those panels and push them all the way through. Golly. I learned a lot of things just by visiting this ranch. I'm always trying to pick up new things when you go and visit these ranches. I know you've seen some of my videos. If you haven't, you can go back and watch a lot of my, I got two Addington Farm Ranch visits on there. I was actually working the bison. Here I didn't have to work the bison. They don't work their bison until November. Gary told me that they used to keep the bulls separate. He told me that their calving rate was a in the 70%, I wanted to say 72%, 74%. That's from keeping the bulls together and then rotating them in with the main herd when breeding season comes around. If you don't know when breeding season is, it starts really in the beginning of July and can run all the way through September. They were putting the bulls, they were keeping them together, and then they were letting them out in the main herd to breed. Naturally, the big natural herds like in Yellowstone or Custer and those places, and just like ours, we keep our bulls, Big Joe with his females, and Dunbar with those females, year around he said once they started doing that keeping the bulls with the main herd their calving rate went up to over 90 percent is what their calving rate went up to so just learning through the process even if you have over 400 animals 400 bison it's a process of learning and their calving rate has gone up i thought that was pretty interesting these guys do a lot of rotational grazing taking care of the soil taking care of the native grasses it's always fun to visit other ranches, whether I'm working the bison or just going to see the bison and learn how they do things. The other part about this is it was right here in Oklahoma. So uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing somebody else's ranch. It's just a little bit different than seeing mine. Mine are doing great. We're still waiting on two calves and I think one will be here. We're waiting on Flo. Flo is a big joe cow that should be having a baby soon so we're waiting on flo to have hers i think she's really close thank you guys for watching and i know it's a little bit different but i just wanted to bring you along it doesn't matter it's all about bison whether it's on my ranch or somebody else's i just love showing you the bison and i know that's why you follow along and if you haven't follow us along this channel is all about bison it's all about raising the american icon america's mammal and doing the best we can to preserve this animal and its culture and heritage. I also want to thank Gary, the Clearwater Ranch Manager today for showing me around. I just appreciate taking time out of his busy season. They have great looking animals and I was happy to go out there and learn something new and just take a look at those beautiful majestic animals. Thank you again. Guys stay tuned. I got some new gear coming around the corner. I got a new t-shirt and I may have some new koozies available on our website pretty soon. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon.